Right, well, in the last year and a half, what we know about COVID-19 has dramatically changed, rapidly changed, you might say, and many doctors now say the virus it is here to stay. Yeah, Dr. Oz kicking off his 13th season, starting with one of the biggest questions. So many of us are asking, do I need the booster? Dr. Oz, it's been a while, sir. It's a pleasure to see you. And this is couldn't be more topical, really. We've been talking about this quite a bit on Good Day of Late. So we've talked to the local physicians here in Chicago. What is your take? Let's begin with the booster and the time frame between that second shot and when you think we should be talking about getting the booster. You know, to answer specific questions, I'm going to do what I've been doing for 13 years on the show, take a step back. So what is our goal? Is the goal to extinguish the virus or is it to tame the virus? And I would argue, and I'm not alone, that with 14 species now having COVID and 37% of the 8 billion people vaccinated, which leaves 63% not, that we need to live the lives we want without assuming we will get rid of the virus. So that changes the target here. And for that reason, I'm going to argue that we should have a booster. But the reason to have the booster is the reason we give kids boosters. They get their first or second shot. Then about six months to 12 months later, they get another shot. And that not, it doesn't increase so much the protection as it, it lets that protection become more durable. And that's the argument Peter Hotez, who's coming on the show today, one of our nation's leading virologists, argues. He said all along... We should have told America they needed a third shot. We've misled them by making them believe that that early shot, whether it was one or two, uh, would be enough. We would always have, have had to give a second, a, an additional booster at some point. This is the, probably the right time to do it. There is no urgency. The vast majority of Americans, especially if you're healthy, are well protected. So no need to go rush ahead and try to get the, the booster now. But by the end of the year, the CDC, FDA will probably endorse it, embrace it, and the country will start getting an additional shot. Well, Dr. Oz, you know, I think a lot of people wonder, you know, how much can a body take and how often should you be spacing out these boosters? Because when you hear that you're going to need one and then you're going to maybe need another, I mean, how often and how does that in impact the human body? Well, there is an impact on the body and some people have reactions to the vaccine. So you want to do the least you can to get the protection you need. The vast majority of healthy people who have had vaccinations are safe. They're, the chance of having hospitalization or mortality is one-tenth the rate of people who are unvaccinated. And a lot of the incidences of, of Delta are asymptomatic. That's how effective the vaccines are. They're exceptions, usually older, frailer people who have other health problems. They're the ones who probably should be getting a booster shot. So there is no urgency. And I think time is on our side for that reason, unlike when, when there wasn't a vaccination program in place. But how long to wait? It's unclear. Israel, there's a few months ahead of us. The entire nation gets vaccinated. They've gotten their third shots. Let's see what happens there. Let's see what their benefit is, and let's see if there's complications that arise from it. My belief is it'll be demonstrated to be effective and safe, and a lot of Americans will want a third shot. But you ask Anita an important question. I don't think getting a shot every six months is, is the right way to go, and I don't think we'll need to do it either, but only time will tell. Hopefully the virus won't mutate so quickly that it will require additional aggressive efforts. And we don't need to change the booster. That's, this weekend there was new data showing that just getting the original shot is effective enough. We don't need a new vaccine. Dr. Ross, real quick, and we're quickly running out of time. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Here in Chicago, one of the big stories this morning is um, a anti-vaxxer, well-known, some link her to QAnon conspiracy theories, has died here in Chicago. Apparently, she had been demanding ivermectin, and uh, the, her medical care professionals refused to give it to her. Offer our viewers a thought, if you will, on alternative treatments for COVID. You know, we call them alternative treatments, but we should be able to repurpose already existing medications that work for things like COVID and examine whether they work for COVID. It's actually an embarrassment that we don't have clinical trial data on inexpensive solutions that are used around the world. I don't know if ivermectin works, but nor does anybody else because we don't have trial data, high quality trial data because it's a cheap drug and companies won't pay for it. There's no profit motive. Hmm. And I think that bothers a lot of Americans who argue, what well, can't you just check the simple stuff? We know steroids worked. Thank goodness you checked that. What about all these other drugs that are out there? The more we check things like vitamin D, um, the more people will feel comfortable that all the boxes have been checked. It's unfortunate, though, that people would think that vaccination and any medication are equivalent. Vaccines are the clearest way of protecting yourself. At least get that done. Then you can play around with the other tr primary preventive approaches. Hmm. All right, Dr. Oz, good to see you this morning. Stay well. Have a good one.
Okay, let's get you, of course, Dr. Oz is always uh, available for you to watch yeah. Monday through Friday the right here in. on Fox 32, right after our noon show here on Fox 32.